ado, uh, please welcome Mr. Alan T. Thank you, thank you. Uh, first and foremost, I want to say it's such an honor to be here. Um, having to look online at your HR videos and seeing the feedback, this is such an amazing company that you guys are working on. And second thing I wanted to say really thank you to, to Koji, because when I first spoke to him, one of the things that he mentioned uh, through the, uh, one of the ops that you guys have feedback from among employees is that there are two specific things that you guys really care about. One is stress management. And the second is work-life balance. So this is what this workshop, this lecture is about today. Um, because there are two separate topics. We're going to be specifically focusing on work-life balance. Cool with everybody? All right? So give uh, hands, hands to Koji. So appreciate it. So, because this man really cares about you. He really cares about your well-being. So we really appreciate that. OK, so with that said, the topic today is the number one reason why most people can't find work-life balance. And actually, how many ever try to, this is like the holy grail, right, for everybody. How many of you people here ever trying to find work-life balance? Okay, what are some of those, good, like, wow, good number of people. So what are some of your strategies to try to find work-life balance? Anybody? Don't Tra check emails. Don't check emails, okay. Well, during work, you have to check emails, right? <laughs> Otherwise, you will not be an employee. So, OK. Uh, anybody else? Wake but, up earlier. What's that? Wake up earlier. Or wake up earlier. Good strategy. Anybody else? Take proper lunch. Take proper lunch. Absolutely. Yes. Make a schedule. Make a schedule. Absolutely. Yes. PTO. PTO. Yeah, absolutely. So those feedback are all awesome, even including the email. Don't check your email on Sunday, right? I mean, unless you have to, because that's when we take in our personal time away from us. All right, so how many teaching strategies the last 14 years that I've studied with, and I've looked, really looked at the entire industry. The people like the Elon Musk, the Oprah, Winfrey, the Tony Robbins, uh, the Ariana Huffington. What do they do each and every day to feel like fulfilled, to chase their passion? And the other side, find work-life balance and not get burned out. How many of you here is interested in learning what they do so that you can bring it to your life and achieve the results that you want? Cool. Awesome. So before we begin, let me ask you this. Have you guys ever been to a meeting and feel like it's like a perpetual meeting, and then you go into a meeting after a meeting after a meeting, and then you feel like you're meeting for a meeting? <laughs> but has, that, has this ever happened to anybody here? I see some people smiling. I'm sure you guys can relate, relate with this. How about this? Uh, who's, who's ever had to work under like a really stringent, tight deadline? Anybody in engineering? Uh, you're laughing, right? Anybody in development? Full stack developer, anybody? Okay. Anybody in QA? Okay. Anybody in sales? Who's in sales? Okay. That one person. Okay. How about finance? Anybody in finance? So end of quarter, what happens? Right? Yeah, you gotta run reports, you gotta close your book. Look, the whole time you're like, you're under strict deadline. I mean, a good friend of mine, he's a developer, and when he's at night, he's like sleeping, he's crunching code in his head. Right? If you guys, you're laughing because you know what I'm talking about, right? And if you're a finance person, end of quarter or end of year when you're trying to close a book, you're like here probably 8 o'clock at night, aren't you, right? So you know ex exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, who is here for support? Who's here for support? Ah, okay. I'm sorry, you guys, got, you guys are like the first line of defense, aren't you? When things go wrong, who do they call? Not the Ghostbusters, right? They call you guys, right? What are they? And oftentimes when the clients call you, are they happy? No. <laughs> that happens at every company, not just you guys, right? Yeah, so you guys get the whole blunt of like just people upset. Like, it's, it's horrible. So how many of you at the end of the day feel like this? I see a couple of people nodding their head. Like you're, you're kind of like barely like treading, trying to keep your head above water. Well, unfortunately, that's how most people live day in and day out. And I see a couple, uh, most of you guys are nodding your heads here, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. This is how we live our life, don't we? Yes? Right? So it's uh, Wall Street Journal recently published an article. Feeling burnout at work? Join the club. It's not like, wow, actually you feel burned out? Perfect. This is like the badge of honor. You should be feeling burning out. 
Well, most people feel like that. In fact, more than 44% of Americans feel burned out each and every day. And burnout and stress, actually, how many of you guys know the prolonged duration of stress? How does that affect your body? Anybody know? Have no idea? Weight gain, yeah. Uh, insomnia, diabetes, heart disease. Yeah, that's, everything's all related. That's, have you ever heard of that 99% of all diseases stem from stress? Yeah. Okay, so how do we, how do we really chase our passion and, and fill that work-life balance that I'm talking about? So here's a picture of me back in 2000. Right? This is when I was like, like 30 pounds heavier than today, fat. And this is my mom, this is in New York, New York. And if I can share with the personal story with you, um, at that time, I was one step from being homeless. I lost my job, I was doing consulting. Uh, the reason why I gained so much weight was because I flew all around the country as a consultant, and we can eat whatever we want, right, on company dime. So I ate a lot of steaks and lobsters, and a year and a half later, poof, I became that, because I didn't wash my diet. Oh, and by the way, I didn't work out either, because I didn't like, eh, I'll just leave that for later, right? So all of a sudden, I woke up one morning, after sleeping 12 hours a day, feeling tired, and I want to go back to sleep. And that happened for an entire six months. I went to the doctor. The doctor said, I'm sorry, I can't do anything for you. Just go take some, medic take some medication. I'm like, you know, that's not what I want to live, how I want to live my life. And how many here kind of can relate to this, that you know that when stress and, and when, like low energy like, is affecting your life, it does not affect your work, it affects your relationship, it affects your family life, and it affects your overall being, doesn't it? Yeah, because my girlfriend left me. Right. So at that moment, I had an epiphany. I'm like, you know what? The fundamental of success is health, because wealth is health. Right. There's an Indian saying that, you know, if you have, if you're healthy, you have a thousand dreams. If you have cancer, you only have one, which is to get better. Right? Yes or no? Right? Follow me so far? Okay. So, I want to share with you what I share with my corporate clients on the work-life balance. Now, the the concept of work-life balance itself sounds fantastic. Okay. It works in an ideal world, but in reality, as you guys can see, like we come up with all these different answers for work-life balance, not check your email, get up earlier. It doesn't work, does it? Because otherwise you guys wouldn't be sitting here and I wouldn't be lecturing, would I? <laughs> right? So the concept of work-life balance is, hey, I'm going to focus on my work from 9 to 5 or whatever you get in or, or work later. And then when I get home, I'm going to put my work aside and I'm going to spend my time with my friends and and my family and my kids, and we'll all be happy, right? How many ever try that? Doesn't work, does it? How many, so support people, how many of you get like maybe one o'clock in the morning, ever get an email or, or ping like, uh, I need help with SkySlope? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Anybody else in IT? Okay, so if you guys been in IT long enough, you guys went 24 by seven, right? You get that pager, remember back in the days when you carry a pager? Yeah, she's laughing, right? She's nodding her head. So, so they're constantly, we're, we're choosing this side and we're choosing that side, we're choosing this side. We're trying to find these balance, but what's missing here? There's no integration. You know what I'm saying? Because life is happening for us. When we're at work, there are going to be days when, you know, you're going to get a call from your mom and dad or maybe from your wife or your, or your husband. It's like, hey, honey, I need your help right now. Is it? Anybody can relate to that. There's going to be days if you have kids, like, you know, your, your principal, your school principal calls you like, your son is misbehaving badly at school. You better come and come to the principal's office, right? So that's going to happen. It's, it's this part of life, right? So if we're going to push that aside, like, no, no, I'm going to focus on that. I'm going to focus on work. How's that going to work well in your life? It's not. So everything is integration. It's not a balance. So that's a concept I'd like to share with you, something to think about. It's not a balance, cool? It's an integration. So that's myth number one. So what I like to do is share with you currently a snapshot of your own life right now. Because everybody's life is different, and obviously some of you might be single, some of you might be married, some of you might have kids, right? Everybody's life is a little bit different, 
But we want to take a look at what is your current snapshot of your life and if you have work life integration. Okay? So Koji is going to be passing out a piece of paper and pen. And what I'd like you to do is look at these different categories in your life. Okay? And as you look at them, you're going to be marking them. These hash marks are from a scale of 1 to 10. 10 being that you have, for example, you love your work. This is your mission. You, you can't, like when you go to sleep at night, you can't wake up to get, come back to work in the morning, right? So you'll probably be at a 10. So mark, draw a line straight from here to here. So this is your work, career, mission. Or if you're like fully fulfilled in your, your relationship, you're like super, like super loving with your wife or your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whatever that is, mark um, a line here. So whatever that is for you, go ahead and mark a line. Now, keep in mind, this snapshot, okay, okay, before you guys start marking, is what you guys feel consistently. Okay, not just today, like I feel like crap today, so I'm just gonna mark here, okay. What do you guys feel consistently? Okay, overall, you know, my, my well-being, my emotion is like maybe a five or six, okay? All right, so go ahead and do that right now. Go ahead and mark it down for me. And if anybody have any questions, feel free to raise your hand, I'll come by. Yes. Um, what's your definition of that? Um, everybody's definition is a little bit different, but my definition is, you know, sometimes life, like, we don't celebrate enough. Like the little successes. Do I just go like, I seize the day, right? Carpe diem, right? Um, that's one way to celebrate. Uh, contribution would be like, do you guys do volunteering? Like, maybe go help out at SPCA. Or for me, I'm big on performing arts, so I go help out with uh, high school kids, right? Okay, sweet. Thank Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Anybody have any other questions? No? Pretty straightforward? Hey, anybody else have any questions about these categories? Pretty straightforward, right? So chances are your graph looks somewhere like this, doesn't it? Right, you're not like fully a full circle. Anybody kind of like anybody's uh, will of light kind of resembles this? Okay, look around. So if I can ask you guys, what are some of the things that's more like towards nine or a ten? What kind of categories are you, do you guys have? Anybody like to share? Yes. Uh, emotions and meanings is a ten, and relationships is also a ten. Okay, relationship and meaning is a ten. Cool. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Anybody else? Relationship is also a 10. Very cool. So you guys have like read like uh, men from Mars, women from Venus. Is that why you guys master this part? <laughs> okay, anybody else? Support? Calling you guys, looking at you. <laughs> Would you like to share? Yes. Mine's all work and finances. Okay. Work and finances, right? All right. So. If this is the wheel of your life, and you're going 100 miles an hour, and this is the tire, right? this is your wheel, how fast would you be able to go? Slow. Slow. Why? Yeah. <laughs> it's not it's very lopsided. You're going to go ka-ching, 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 right? Well, so I like you to think about this. So some of you mentioned like emotions and, and relationships, right? So. For sake of argument, let's take a look at what most people's uh, wheel of life looks like. They're focused on their career, and because they're so focused on career, they make a lot of good money, right? So their finance is covered. But then when you focus at work, guess what happened? How much time do you have? Zero. Zero, <laughs> Zero almost none, right? Uh, if you focus all at work, do you have time to take care of your body, like go and work out or do yoga or meditate? Not a whole lot, right? Because you don't have much time. Or how about relationships? Right, like, oh, wait, honey, I got to check my email. I got to respond back. Can we talk about that later? Is that ever happening to anybody? Okay. Right, of course, we all do, right? So obviously, this doesn't work. So this is a snapshot of your current real life, something for you to think about, okay? Um, one of my clients who runs a $10 million, or $10 million portfolio gone through a divorce recently. Before he's gone through a divorce, we had a snapshot of his life. And it kind of looked like this. His 
working finances in check, but his relationship was more like here, horrible. And because of that, he found like there's no meaning in life. He went out and started drinking alcohol, tons of alcohol for an entire year. And the more alcohol he drank, the more pissed off he got. You guys seen that, the vicious cycle? So because this was off balance, it's not integrated, okay? So that's something for you guys to think about. So with that said, let's go to number two. Some of the things I've talked about with my corporate clients is, oh, hey, you only need five hours of sleep a day. How many here sleep five, hour, five hours a day? Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I've seen support. <laughs> <laughs> I see a correlation here. Okay, um, you don't have to change your mind, but if I can convince you why you want to sleep more, ideally seven to nine hours. I get it, you guys are, if you guys are in support, you guys are under a lot of pressure, but these are the reasons why. Now, in a short run, you can absolutely do this. In fact, there are days where I went for two weeks, I only slept like two or three hours a day when I served as a senior leader for Tony Robbins. If you have ever been to a Tony Robbins event, it's, it's crazy, right? So we do like 14 hour days, and plus as a senior leader, we stay up for another three, four hours after that, right? So you can definitely operate this, but in the long run, it wreaks havoc in your body. Uh, one of my friends who's Dr. Daniel Amen, New York Times bestseller, he's, He's the guy who studies uh, neuroscience. He studies, he basically scans people's brain. Okay? He started out as scanning the NFL players from the 49ers and see what their brain likes after injuries. Okay? And he tracked them from years, from year five, year 10, year 20. And through severe impact, you can start the denigration of their brain over the years. But then one day he's like, hmm. What happens if we track people who only sleep five hours, less than five hours a day? I'm sure you guys heard before, like, hey, there's plenty of time to sleep. Either when you die, there's plenty of time to sleep. So you don't need to sleep, just sleep five hours. If you want to achieve anything, just sleep five hours. Well, it turns out that high performance studies, based on his research, shown that when you sleep five hours a day, chronically, like after five years, after 10 years, your brain started to degenerate. How many here of you guys like ever come to work or maybe on a Saturday you wake up kind of feeling groggy, like your, your kind of brain is like you have brain fog and you're kind of like you have this thing, big thing on your forehead that's out of order, right? <laughs> All the time? Okay. All the time. Okay. And if you have kids, this is even worse, right? Because I got, my, my, I have a two and a half year old, like when she was first born. <laughs> so if you have any kids, well, well, that's a different topic. If you have any kids, you're not going to get any sleep in the beginning, the infants, okay? So anyway, so you, got this, you guys got this point? You gotta have at least seven to nine hours of sleep, ideally, okay? So that's myth number two. Myth number three. Hey, I don't need any sleep, I'll just willpower it. Drink tons of coffee, Red Bull, we're... Nothing wrong with that. But also neuroscience has found that, turns out willpower is like muscles. When you sleep five hours a day, when, when you don't take care of yourself, that muscle, starts to weaken. And eventually, how many of you ever tried this willpower, 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 and then by the end of the month you're like, this sucks. <laughs> it's not working. So you know this doesn't work, right? So these are all the myths of strategies that I share with my corporate clients. So how do these people like the Elon Musk, the Oprah, and the Tony Robbins, and the rest of all these success successful people, they chase their passion, they love what they do, and they do this day in and day out. I'm not talking about a month or a year or five years. These people, Oprah's been on show, what, since like when, when I was a kid, right? These people are doing it forever. How do they do it? Well, it turns out that success leaves clues. If you want to live a life of passion and this work-life integration, these people have done it. So these, after studying 14 years and what they've done, I'm like, just pulling my hair out, the holy grail. This is what I found out they have the things in common, okay? You guys ready? Yes? yes. Kind of excited? Just a little bit? <laughs> All right. So the top work-life integration strategy, number one, acronym called AIM. You want a work-life integration, you got to aim for it, okay? Feel free to take some good notes. The A and aim is your aspiration. OK, 
Okay, there are three types of aspiration. There's the personal aspiration, like, hey, I want to be the employee of the month. Or if you're in sales, I want to be the salesperson of the year. Or if you're in, you're in support, like, you know what, I want to be the damn best support engineer there is in this company. How many here can relate to that? Yeah, because this is your aspiration. Because this is what you love to do. Right? You want to be recognized, you want to achieve, and you want to be, uh, get feedback from your peers as well. And you want to get promoted, and probably want to eventually move up and climb this corporate ladder. Right? Yes or no? So that is your personal inspiration or aspiration. Okay? Second, it could be your family aspiration. So the reason why I pulled myself out of chronic fatigue was because I had to support my retired mom and dad. Again, we, well, so we lived at the San Francisco at the time. Anybody here familiar with in-law units? Right? This is where they converted, if you guys are not familiar, this is where they converted the garage into living quarters. And we lived there for like 13 years. And I had this big pipe over my room. I, every day I dug in and dug out and, to get inside my room. And the worst part is my landlord, he drives like a diesel Mercedes Benz. And this is not, I'm not talking about the clean diesel that we have now. Remember those diesels like, that just pushes all these black soot out? So every time he pulls in, we got to close all the doors so we don't get suck on all their diesel fume. Right? So my aspiration was to support my mom and dad, make sure they have a good life. Right? Follow me? So that's why I work even harder. And I tried all that stuff, mistake that I did, the myth. I did all that. Okay? And eventually, I got burned out a year and a half later. Okay? Now, three is your global aspiration. So what is that? Like the Mother Teresa, like uh, even Elon Musk, he's got this grand like, scheme, like this, this grand I ideal vision. Right, so SpaceX, for example. Uh, anybody familiar with that project? Right? So whereas NASA costs like billions of dollars to build a rocket ship, he's like, hey, let's do it, see if we can do it commercially for a million dollars. He did that because he had a vision. Right? So that's a global aspiration. So you gotta find out what your aspiration is. And the key thing is this aspiration can change over time as well. Like Koji, you're about to have a daughter, right? So your aspiration start to shift, isn't it, right? So you're starting from before it's personal aspiration, now it's family asp aspiration, right? So things change, okay? Now, the I in M stands for integration. Write this down. So there are two types of integration. There is the work-life integration that I've talked about, and there's a knowledge integration. So first, the work-life uh, work integration, what I'm talking about is, you know, when I, write, when I was writing my book, at the time, my, my daughter was one, one, right? So she'll come over, she goes, Dad, Dad. Like she wants me to give her a hug. So, so I'm sitting in my chair, I, I pick her up and put her on my lap. I'm like, Dad's working okay, I'm writing my book. You know, I'm, I'm in that zone, if you guys know what I'm talking about, that zone, right? I'm working, just I'm cranking away. Is it okay if I just work out? Yeah, she can't talk at the time. And she's sitting there, watching me type. And the next thing you know, she goes, eh. I'm like, honey, please don't punch the key because daddy's writing, right? A minute later, I'm just like pulling my hair out. I'm like, I'm in a zone, I'm in a flow, I'm trying to write my book, the, the book he, Koji like, read, and, and I can't write anymore because like, my, my kid is right. This is a work-life balance, right? So had I, had I said, you know, go away. Daddy needs to work. I lose that moment to connect with my daughter. Does that make sense? Right? And I won't, I'll lose that forever because she's only one, one years old for that specific period of time. When she grows up to, to 25, she'll probably never want to sit on my lap later. So this is my moment to connect with her. So instead, what I did was, honey, daddy's got to work, but is it okay if I spend five minutes with you? And we'll play and we'll laugh and we'll do whatever. But five minutes later, daddy's got to go back to work, okay? She nods her head. Believe, believe me, she's one years old, but she understands, okay? So we played, and a minute, uh, five minutes later, I'm like, okay, honey, like, go, go, go find mom. So I'm back. Next thing you know, my wife comes over. And she looks at me, and she goes, like, what? So I scoot my chair over, and she sits on my lap. And now she's doing, like, cranking away on my laptop. She's trying to copy my, what my daughter's doing. <laughs> like, you just can't win, right? But this whole part is work-life integration. It's not a balance. You gotta be able to integrate it within yourself. Whatever it means that for you. Second is the knowledge integration. 
What does that mean? So all the information I share with you today is great information, yes or no? Okay. But if you don't integrate in your life, if you don't take action, it's kind of a moot point. Right? Because knowledge is not enough. Knowledge with action equals what? Power. So what was that? Results. Results. <laughs> that too. Okay? So work life integration and make sure you have you do what you preach. So I was talking Koji is, hey, I eat my own dog food. If you guys are in tech, you guys are probably know exactly what that means. If you're not in tech, you're probably like, what? You eat your own dog food? In the Silicon Valley, we have this term. You eat, the comp software company, you eat your own dog food, right? What does that mean? You actually use what you sell, that you built, okay? So this is me and my daughter, and uh, it took her a long time to get this, but I'm like, daddy's gotta read, because I'm big in personal development, as you can tell, right? But at the same time, I'm like, hey, why don't I get her to read? So now, she and I are sitting together at night, we're both reading together, and now we have integration. Whereas before, I'd be like, Go away, daddy's gotta study, right? You, see, you, guys, you guys see the difference? Now again, this is just some examples that I've used in my life, and I'm sure you guys are super creative that you guys can figure out your, wor your world work-life integration. Cool? Any questions? Okay, good. All right, the M and the M and AIM is modulation. What does that mean? You gotta be able to find time, okay? If you're gonna run full tilt, you gotta find some time to relax. If you look at the worst athletes in the world are actually amateur athletes, because what they do, they have the aspiration, they have the integration, but they never, what? Take the time to relax. They never take the time to recover. If you're like, you know what, I, I just gotta achieve this, if I can just ride my bike faster, if I can just pump some weights, heavier weights. But if you look at the professional athletes, what do they do? After a full marathon or after a full uh, Ironman, what do they do? They know the importance of recovery. They know the importance of rest, don't they? So the an analogy for you guys is, if you guys are, are full tilt on a project, especially accountants or finance, if you guys are on a full tilt on a project, you're trying to close your book by the end of the year, make sure you take some time off to recharge your batteries. Okay, any questions? So I noticed that energy is a little bit like dipping here. So if I can get everybody to stand up real quick. Which kind of leads to my next point. All right, so bring your arms up, stretch out, raise to one side, make a big sauce, make a big sound like ah. Okay, turn the other side, ah. Good, all right, go ahead and sit back down. You crazy people. <laughs> Great segue. All right, so AIM, what does A stand for? Aspiration. Aspiration. I, what does I stand for? Integration. Integration. M, what does M stand for? Modulation. Cool. So I work super hard, right? So I'm doing like 14, 15 hours a day, but I make sure I take time to integrate with my family. So not too long ago, a couple months ago, I took my, these are two, this is my love, the love of my life, my wife and my daughter. I took them to Disneyland for a couple of days, okay? Now, here's work-life strategy, integration strategy number two. You gotta know how to manage your energy. I see some smiling back there, okay? So, why is energy a must? So if you don't have the energy, how much focus will you have at work? None. None, okay. I see people shaking their head, right? So you guys are, we all in agreement? Yes? Yeah. Okay. If you have no energy and, and you're in a relationship, will you have passion? I see shaking back back there. No, of course not. If you have kids and you have low energy, guess what's gonna happen? They'll run all over you, won't they? Okay, anybody ever watch The Office? Okay, a couple people. You guys know who Dwight Schrute is? Okay. <laughs> How much influence does he have? Zero, none, because he's always what? So negative. Can you influence people when you have negative energy? No, you can't. So that's why energy is life and energy is a must. You got to, if anything, you got to, you guys got to master your own energy. 
if you guys didn't get anything out of the lecture today. Okay? Now, there are four states of energy for you guys to think about. Now, if somebody's here, this is quadrant four, energy poor, lethargic. This is somebody who like sits on a couch, watch Oprah, and eating bonbon all day. And they have really poor energy and they don't want to move. Okay? This is probably the easiest to fix. Okay, for this person right here, just that person needs to get like kicked in the butt and get out and go work out and go exercise and eat healthier. Okay, this is the easiest part to fix. But I believe you guys, none of you guys are here because you guys are all achievers, aren't you? Yeah. Yes? Okay, one person? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys are all achievers, all right? So, sec so chances are you guys are probably, some of you guys are probably here, quadrant three. Energy poor, exhausted. How many of you guys here feel exhausted from time to time? Okay, look around the room. How many guys here feel exhausted? A lot of times. Okay, mostly from support. <laughs> okay, I get it. I've been there and done that. It's because of five hours of sleep. It's because of the poor diet. It's because you're not taking time to take care of yourself. That's what that's what happens to you here. Uh, a good friend of mine, CEO, like million dollar company, right? So he he wrote on a Facebook page one day. He goes, I don't understand. So get this. Uh, I do P90X on Monday. I do a full two mile swim on Tuesday. I do a, uh, a CrossFit, like three hour CrossFit class on Wednesday. Um, I do all these different exercises Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And I don't know why I feel burnt out. <laughs> Gee, I don't know why you feel burnt out either. And he feels exhausted. I'm like, How? help me, I just want more energy. Dude, you never rest. Rest is part of their workout regimen as well. So like for you guys, you guys, you guys have to learn how to know how to rest as well, okay, to get out of the state. Now, on the flip side, who's ever gotten, got up in it like early in the morning and you just got jump out of bed and you're like, oh my God, like this is awesome. I feel so great and everything feels good. I'm sure all of you guys felt that way before, right? So this is energy rich. And I'm like, yeah, I think I that. Yeah, I got that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but the challenge is here is it only lasts maybe a day or two or maybe a month. So the question is how do we move to this energy rich state? So in a moment, I'm going to share with you how to quickly move from here to here. Actually move from here to here first. And if you do this exercise on a consistent basis, you too can feel that. How many of you is up for that? Okay, cool. All right, yeah, sign me up. <laughs> All right, so again, why is energy important? If your aspiration is climb the corporate ladder, but meaning that you want to get promoted, you want to get recognized by your peers, you want to get recognized by your management, you want to climb this leadership ladder, you got to have energy, don't you? Yes? Or your other aspiration is, you know what, I want to have an even bit, like more meaningful relationship after I come, out of, come off of work. So how do I have more energy to play with your kids so that they don't run around you? Now, I know you guys, you guys are like the, Disruptive innovation. You guys are disruptive technology. Okay. I bought a house many years ago. I remember I had it. How many here own a house? Or have the luxury of, of actually signing that, that whole ream of paper? If you guys like old school, right? You guys know what I'm talking about? What's that? I oh, yeah. It was crazy, right? <laughs> and, then, and then what happens if, if one document changes? Start the process all over again. But when I sold my house a couple of years ago in San Jose, that's exactly what happened. The contingency change, the, 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 the seller agreement change, I change, like just even negotiating price change. Start the process all over, right? So you guys are a disrupt, the disruptor of your industry, just like Airbnb and Uber. So how do you continue to be that disruptive technology and be all the competition? Energy. I, I'm sorry, a little bit louder? <laughs> Energy, right? All right, so kind of recap from my story. Remember I had chronic fatigue, I, I'm almost homeless. Um, one of my long, lifelong passion is to run a half marathon. Anybody half marathoner, marathoner here? Okay, cool. So one. The reason why I want to run it is because I absolutely hate running. <laughs> you know, some people, they're afraid of heights, so what do they do? They jump out of airplanes. Been there, done that. No big deal. At least for me, just for me. Running? <laughs> Hated. The most I ever ran in my life was five miles. And that was like painful. And, and my wife said, 
Oh, hey, by the way, uh, Disneyland has a Star Wars theme coming up, a half marathon. Oh, you won't be interested in that. Like, what do you mean? So you'll be running with like you know, uh, uh, Darth Vader and Stormtroopers and Wookiees and all that good stuff, right? I'm like, wait, wait a minute, sign me up. So because I have abundant energy, this was one of my dreams. That's why I was able to fulfill it, right? And that, for me, the meaning of, for me to run that half marathon is, if I can achieve that, because I absolutely hate running, I can achieve whatever I want in my life. And that's the, the inspiration I want to share with you is, when you have the energy, you can go out and choose your dream. There's plenty of that. And go fulfill it. With me so far? Good. So with that said, I'm going to share with you three questions to take away. And I'd like you to go ahead and take some notes. Okay? These are high performance questions. <clears throat> Number one, what are the top three, three things you learned today about work-life integration? Go ahead and write that down. Okay, second question. What is the one thing that you learned from this lecture today that will make a huge impact in your life? Okay, number three. What is the one thing that, you really, that really resonated with you today from this lecture? Okay, uh, what I'd like you to do is go ahead and partner up, find a partner, and talk about the three things that you guys learned today. Cool? So I'll give you guys five minutes. Ready? Go. OK, everybody, let's go ahead and wrap it up. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. OK, so now, so what do you guys learn? If I can get a couple of feedbacks. Anybody like to share? And there's a study shown that if you're, especially for women, if you're over the age 40 and you don't get enough sleep, there are 10 times more than men chance of you getting a heart attack. Heart diseases. <laughs> and I was scratching my head and I can't figure this out. What's that? It's crazy. I'm like, why is it only for women? Why not men? And I was scratching my head and I couldn't figure it out. And I observed, this is for me, I observed in my own life. Because if you guys are mothers, you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. When your kid's crying, whether how tired you are, right? With me? Okay, I'm like, honey, just, just let her cry. Like, she'll be okay. <laughs> right? I'm like, huh. That's why women, <laughs> but that's, bi that's biological. That's how women are wired, aren't you? Because right? you're going to be mothers. You protect your kids. If you look at mama bear in the nature, they protect their cubs. That's how they're like. I'm like, hmm, maybe my suspicion, that's why. See a difference? Cool. All right, anybody else? That, that's a very good point. So in 2006, at the time, I was working for Hewlett Packard uh, software division. And I was part of the, doing software for their account management. And that year, and I'm saying this not to say how great I am. I'm saying this is what, how you can, choose, you can use for your own life. That year, because I used some of these strategies I taught you guys, that year, I became the number one account manager for Hewlett Packard for 2006. In fact, one night, this is my, in my book, by the way, one night, a friend of mine, Diane, it was like Friday night, 8 o'clock, I'm still working, right? My, my friend Diane comes over and goes, Alan, you're still here. I, I, I can't believe you're still here. I'm like, I'm working. I got quota, I got quotes to send out. I got emails to follow up, things like that. He's like, I can't believe it. You, you're killing your numbers, but you make it seem so easy. <laughs> like, it is not easy. If it's easy, I won't be here. It's like, you got a point, right? So it's about this work-life integration, and it's a great segue. Because that night, what I did was I took a five-minute uh, de-stress, a way to de-stress myself to recharge my battery, because I still got to drive back home from San Francisco, from Mountain View, which is like another hour. And I know if I drove back, I'd fall asleep. 
So what I'd like you to do is show with you how do I boost my energy so that you can use it any time in your life. Is that cool? So go ahead and stand up with me. All right, so what I'd like you to do is go ahead and bring your feet, feet about shoulders width apart and just gently bounce up and down. Okay? So go ahead and shake your hands out. So notice where you're holding tension in your body. It might be your neck and shoulder. It might be your glutes. It might be your chest. Whatever that is for you, just kind of bounce and shake everything out. And uh, we're starting to run out of time, so I'm not going to go deep into exactly what we're doing. But if you guys are mothers, what do you guys do when you're trying to calm your kid? You bounce, don't you? Okay. So what I'm teaching you guys is what we do naturally. Just as we grow older, we forget. And if you look at kids, why do they have so much energy? They're always bouncing around, aren't they? Yep. Crazy, isn't it? When we grow up, what do we do? <laughs> right? We don't move. So you got to move. So what I'm teaching you here right now, you can do about five minutes a day. Uh, ideally, you want to do it about an hour to about an hour and a half. Just get up and move your body. Just move a little bit. All right? So go ahead and stand still real quick. Now, notice your body right now. Do you feel a little bit lighter or heavier? Lighter. lighter. Do you feel more relaxed or more like, Arr. how long did I take? 30 seconds, right? You can absolutely do this. Okay, now, I want you to gauge your energy level from a scale of 1 to 10. 10 being like, you're like, you're ready to run a marathon, right? 1 is like, you're about to die. <laughs> that, I know that's not in this room, but, okay? Okay, so notice, your, notice where your energy is at right now. You don't have to tell me, just go ahead and notice it. Scale of 1 to 10. 5, 7, 8, whatever that is for you. Cool, everybody got it? So what I like you to do is go ahead and rub your palms together. So create some heat, rub a little bit harder. And then in a moment, we're going to rub our lower back, like so. Okay, go ahead and rub your lower back. And shake everything out. Okay, once more. Okay, go ahead and rub our lower back. And then tap it. Okay, do you guys feel heat? Go ahead and shake it out. Do you guys feel a little bit warmer? Okay, so that's our energy moving. Okay, so what I taught you guys here, just that two simple things. One is to shake out, like all your stress, all that negativity, all that negative energy out of your body. Two is we're recharging our adrenal glands. So this is our kidneys. In traditional Chinese medicine, these kidneys are like batteries. So when, we, when we're tired, you just, just do that, they'll recharge your battery. So now notice your energy level. Did it up notch a couple bit? So what are some of your energy now? Seven. Seven. Who else? Seven. Seven. Yeah. Seven. What was it at before? Five, six. How long did I take? 30 seconds. This is, you can absolutely, that's why I wrote the book, The Instant Energy Method, right? Was that pretty instant? Okay, you crazy people, go ahead and have a seat. <laughs> All right, how many of you had the luxury to either travel to Asia or been to Chinatown? Okay, have you ever seen these old, what's that? I said that's a big difference. That's a big difference. <laughs> Well, I know, but they're all Chinese people, aren't they? <laughs> I think they have one common denominator, right? <laughs> so, have you ever been to Asia, ever been to Chinatown, or see like these old women or old men doing Tai Chi in the park? Have you ever seen them do this? You seen it, right? You know what I'm talking about? Is it because of the back? Because they have back pain? No, they are recharging their batteries. Cool, all right? Yeah. So uh, that's from energy medicine that I've just quickly, you can, do, you can absolutely use. So with that said, uh, this pretty wraps up our lecture today. Um, again, thanks for Koji for bringing me in. It's such an honor to be here. Uh, if you guys want to learn more about this, the next lecture is about why mobile phone is stressing us out and killing our personal lives. That was a front page cover of USA Today. Seven out of 10 people says they're, they're always working and it's killing their personal lives. We're gonna talk about why mobile phone is 
wreaking havoc in our lives. So how many of you here like, like check your phone right before you sleep? I do, right? How many of you actually get up in the morning and check your phone? Look around the room. So what will happen is when you look at your phone at night, it's emitting, emitting these blue ray. You know, if you look at this, the sun, the, the color spectrum, it's pushing out these blue ray, telling your brain it's still day. So because of that, your brain thinks it's still daylight. So you don't want to sleep. And that wreaks havoc because if you don't get enough sleep, you're only getting five hours sleep. Not because you don't want to, because you can't. You have insomnia. Right? And it's wreaking havoc in our life. And it goes so much more about that in terms of posture and how it affects our life and things like that. So with that said, that's... <laughs> anybody feels like this when you come to work? <laughs> All the time? <laughs> Sometimes? <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So this is what we want to avoid. Okay? All right? So we want to have you more energy in life. Cool? With that said, uh, Q&A, any questions? No? Yeah, I know you guys are achievers, right? You guys got it. Any questions about aspiration, about, yes? How does the work come home? Great question. So the question is, any advice on commuting when you're going home, or to or, to or from work, right? How long is your commute? OK. So my commute before, if you can imagine driving from San Francisco to San, uh, not San Jose, well, I've actually done that too, but to Mountain View, without traffic, you're looking at 45 minutes. With traffic, if it's raining, it's like two hours. One way, one way, OK? So in the morning, what I do is uh, I found, it depends on you, right, because this is your own world. Um, what I do is I listen to music. Me, personally, I listen to just relaxing music because it sets the tone for the day. Right? right before I get to the office, I meditate for about five minutes. Really sets the tone for the day. Because whatever's going crazy around my world, no matter. I'm centered. I'm grounded. That's why if you look at the, the best leaders in the world, like I look at Tony like when I'm serving there as a senior leader. Like, things are so crazy. You got like 14,000 participants. Things are going to go wrong. But he's grounded. He's centered. And that's the stuff that I learned from him. Right? So I listen to music. Right, to keep me grounded. Now, for some people, like, they, like if you're in sales, like, I've been there and done that before, like, I want to come in, I, like, I want to be, like, like, be on top of my game. So I listen to like, techno music or whatever that is to get you pumped up. Right before I came here, I listened to pump my music to pump myself up. Because if you can imagine, I come out like, hey, guys, I'm going to talk about energy today. And I got no energy, but I'm teaching how to get more energy. Would I, can I, would I be able to connect with you? No, because I need, a bump, I need to charge my energy up. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Second thing I have to teach you, the other integrated strategy that I love, absolutely love is called no extra time, net time. Okay? What that means is what I, what I do, I do some of the things that I love. I love going out for a mountain bike ride. When I go out for exercise, run, jog, whatever that's for you, I'm listening to Audible. I'm learning. Right, so I'm writing and I'm learning. Two things are my favorite things in the world. When I'm commuting, I'm listening, learning, right, and I'm commuting. Does that help? Yes. Okay, any other questions? Good question, by the way. Any other questions? Yes? Um, do you have any other Okay, so going back to aspiration, if I can ask you, you don't have to answer this, we can talk more about it later. What is your aspiration in life? Is it, is it personal? Is it family? Is it global? What is your aspiration, if I can ask you? Um, having been working with Tony, again, we're only getting a short period of time, like two weeks. We're only getting like two, three hours of sleep. And on our teams, we have to serve about 70 people. Right? We want to make sure they're taken care of. Day five is when we do trauma integration day. That's when Tony raised her hand. Actually, anybody ever seen uh, I Am Naya Guru? Okay, you know that part when that lady stood up like, uh, I, you know, I got raped when I was a kid and, and I want to kill myself and I was in this like Christian cult group. You, you guys remember that? Yeah. I was there. If you watch a movie, I was part. Anyway, my point is, that day happened, two of my team members stood up. And I'm like, I'm getting like two hours of sleep and, and I don't drink coffee. I'll be flat out. 
You're like, what? How is that possible? Right? No, I don't, drink, I don't drink coffee. That's another topic, okay? I don't drink coffee. So the stuff I just taught you boosts boost my energy up. <laughs> Woo! Okay, so we're getting feedback right now, right? Um, but my aspiration was to serve them fully. Does that make sense? Because I want to make sure that, like here's a true, true example. One of the ladies said, I just talked to my mother. I fell in marriage. I fell in business. And I want to kill myself. The exact person on my team. Calls her mom. Mom says, don't kill yourself just yet. Come back home. We'll kill ourselves together. That's the type of stuff we have to work with. Yeah? If my energy is low, if, 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 my aspir if I don't have any aspiration, I'll be like, haha, good luck. But my job there is to save her life. That was my aspiration. So I overcame my mental block, mental tiredness to serve her, serve her fully. That was my aspiration. Does that make sense? If you think about it, human beings will do so much more for their people that they love, don't they? Right? Koji is about to be a father. He's going to do what, absolutely whatever he's going to do for his wife and kid. You be a mother, good example. Even though you're like drop dead, like tired, you're going to get, pick yourself up and go help your kid. So we'll do more for other people than ourselves. So that's why I ask you, what is your aspiration? Because you have your aspiration defined, you won't have any other issue with that. Does that answer your question? Okay. Does that help? Anybody else? Crickets in the room? Okay. So if I can get some feedback from you guys, what did you guys love about this lecture today? Because that's what we've been, we've been taught. You finish work, you put your laptop aside, you come home, you spend time with kids. Anybody ever brought your laptop on and work on email and work on your project? Anybody? Look around the room. Yeah, that's the fact of life. Things change. It probably worked back in the farming days, right? So actually there's an old Indian saying like, eight, 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 out of 24 hours, eight hours, eight. Eight hours I'll be working, you know, plowing. Eight hours I'll be dancing and, and, and having fun. And I'm gonna have eight hours of sleep. Okay, that worked back in the days, you know, when there's no electricity, when the sun goes down, like you gotta have oil lamp, right? Nowadays, it doesn't work. Right? So there's got to be a better way to integrate. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else? I really like the wheel of life. I think it was very helpful to try to quantify what each of these aspects mean for me and see them together and understand what's working and what needs improvement. Absolutely. Yeah, if you don't know where you're at today, how are you going to improve? Okay. Right? Does that make sense? If, if you don't get on a scale and say, well, um, I don't know how much I weigh today, but I want to lose some weight, you don't have a starting point. So this is a good snapshot of start, starting point. So actually, a very good segue. Um, if you guys like to get a copy of your uh, Wheel of Life to your HR so that they can take a snapshot of the company, a segment of the company, of what your uh, your aspiration or your challenges are so that Koji knows how to better serve you guys, feel free to do so. Okay, I know you guys also taken some notes in the back, but I strongly suggest you to you know, give this feedback to your HR department so that they can have, they know exactly how to help you out. Is that cool? All right, so that wrap, wraps up our lecture. Um, love to be here today, it's such an honor. Um, hope you guys got a lot of value out of this. So if I can ask, give feedback to Koji or HR department and let them know about what do you guys like about this lecture today, okay? Um, and then if you guys like, feel free to invite me back. We'll talk about stress management lecture next time. All right, cool. Great, you guys have been awesome. And I appreciate your time.